Norfolk Southern's climb through the Allegheny Mountains of central Pennsylvania features some of the most exciting and picturesque railroading in the United States. In this video, we'll explore the 40-mile section of track that presents the greatest challenge to the railroad, stretching from Conema Yard, just east of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, to Rose Yard in Altoona, Pennsylvania. These two yards are where Norfolk Southern adds and removes pusher engines for the climb through the mountains. From Conema Yard to the summit of the mountains, near the Galitzin Tunnels, the railroad gains an impressive 912 feet in elevation over just a 25-mile stretch of track. The other side of the mountain is even more impressive. From Rose Yard in Altoona to the summit in Galitzin, the railroad gains 1,060 feet of elevation in just 14 miles of track. In order to gain that much elevation in such a short distance, the railroad had to get creative, which is why this section of railroad includes unique features like the world-famous Horseshoe Curve. We'll begin our journey in East Conema at Conema Yard and work our way east to Rose Yard in Altoona. Conema Yard sits just east of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, at milepost 273.2 on Norfolk Southern's busy Pittsburgh line. Our first train of the day is Intermodal Train 212, which today includes one of the blue DC to AC conversion units. Train 212 is an Atlanta, Georgia to Croxton, New Jersey intermodal train that runs each day except Monday. This westbound train has just finished its climb through the mountains. As the end of train 212 comes into view, an eastbound intermodal train races past to begin its climb into the heart of the Allegheny Mountains. Trains that do not require the assistance of pusher engines, like this eastbound, pass through Conema Yard without stopping. Locomotives being used as pusher engines, like this SD90 Mac, 
carry a small gray box on the front of the engine, just below the front handrail. This box contains the equipment for quickly attaching and detaching the bushers. Moving eight miles to the east, we find ourselves in South Fork at milepost 265.6. Train 38G is a mixed freight that works eastbound from Conway, Pennsylvania to Abrams, Pennsylvania seven days a week. With a population of just 490 residents, the borough of Summerhill provides rail fans with a great view of the main line. We've positioned ourselves at the Bridge Street overpass, where you can really hear the eastbound struggle to climb the grade.
Located at milepost 255, the Cassandra Overlook is a rail fan favorite. Here, an old steel road bridge has been converted into a rail fan viewing platform, making for a perfect view of the main line. The grassy area to the side of the bridge also provides a great view of the action, such as this eastbound fighting to reach the summit. The future of the Cassandra Overlook is somewhat unclear. Occasional debris falling from the underside of the structure has made the bridge a bit of a liability for the railroad. If you get the chance, I highly recommend visiting the Overlook while you can. Later, we caught NS8099, the Southern Heritage Unit, riding in the third position on train 12G.
westbound trains heading downhill, like this trash train, can go much faster than the eastbound struggling uphill. Moving east to Lily, our luck continues as we spot the Pennsylvania Heritage Unit from atop the aptly named Overbridge Street. This is train 38G, the same daily mixed freight we saw at South Fork, spotted here on a different day. Once train 38G cleared, we decided to reposition ourselves just over a mile down the line, outside of town at a spot rail fans refer to as Carney's Crossing. And you guessed it, we saw yet another heritage unit. This time, it's the Reading Heritage Unit on a very short intermodal train. Train 20R works eastbound from Landers Yard in Chicago to Port Newark, New Jersey, every day but Sunday. Listen as the train passes the equipment defect detector, located just east of Kearney's Crossing. On a different day, we caught this perfectly timed meet.
When arriving in Crescent, one really gets a sense of being at the top of the mountain. We're very close to the summit now. A rail park in Crescent provides rail fans with a caboose, a picnic table, a gazebo, and a viewing platform, making this location a popular destination for rail fans. It's not uncommon for locomotives to make several trips back and forth on a route in a short period of time. Such was the case with the Southern Heritage Unit during the recording of this video, seen here just two days prior to spotting it at the Cassandra Overlook. It's not uncommon for trains to switch tracks multiple times just east of the rail park. This work train can be seen snaking its way through a couple of switches as it heads east toward Horseshoe Curve. Norfolk Southern interchanges with the RJ Corman Railroad using the Y just across from the rail park. In addition to the interchange, Norfolk Southern operates a small locomotive servicing facility here in Crescent. It is not uncommon to see sets of pusher locomotives detached right across from the rail park, 
making Crescent an exciting place to watch trains. At the summit of the mountain, near the borough of Galitzin, track one diverges from the other two tracks and takes a path known as the slide. Due to its steeper grade, the slide is generally reserved for eastbound trains heading downhill toward Horseshoe Curve and Altoona. The set of three tunnels in Galitzin is collectively referred to as the Galitzin Tunnels, but each tunnel has its own name. Eastbound trains using the slide pass through the single track New Portage Tunnel. The other two tracks pass through the Allegheny Tunnel, which was widened to two tracks in 1995 under the ownership of Conrail. Once the Allegheny Tunnel was widened, the tunnel seen on the left, the Galitzin Tunnel, was removed from service. A small rail park sits adjacent to the western tunnel heads. The park features a caboose and even a small museum. Additionally, the Jackson Street Bridge crossing the tracks has holes cut in the fencing to allow for viewing of trains as they exit the tunnel.
Perhaps there is no rail park more famous than Horseshoe Curve. Located at milepost 241.0, just seven miles east of Galitzin, Horseshoe Curve is an engineering marvel. From one end of the curve to the other, the tracks change 120 feet in elevation, making this one of the steepest grades on a mainline railroad in North America. Rail fans can watch the action at Horseshoe Curve 24-7, 365 on the virtual railfan webcam. At the curve, an ATV trail, heavily used by the locals for off-roading, provides a great vantage point to watch the Norfolk Southern freight trains negotiate the curve. Westbound trains, such as this intermodal, are on the uphill climb as they head toward the summit. In roughly 15 minutes, this train will crest the top of the mountain near the Galitzin Tunnels.
While waiting for trains at the curve, it's not uncommon to hear westbounds working uphill while they're still miles away, while eastbounds heading downhill, like this mixed freight, often sneak up quietly.
as a resident of central Pennsylvania, I've spent countless hours over the past few years collecting lots of drone footage at Horseshoe Curve. If that interests you, be sure to check my channel page after watching this video. Moving 2.7 miles to the east brings us to the outskirts of Altoona, to a spot rail fans refer to as the Brickyard Crossing. Located at milepost 238.3, this is the final grade crossing westbound trains must traverse when leaving the city of Altoona. As a matter of fact, after leaving Altoona, the next grade crossing westbound trains will encounter is Kearney's Crossing located at milepost 253.2, leaving a 14.9 mile stretch with no grade crossings. Our first train at the Brickyard is 12G. This is the same train we saw earlier at Cassandra. Train 12G works Rose Yard in Altoona, so once the train comes to a stop, NS7245 and SD90 Mac will attach to the rear of the train and begin pulling a section of cars away to begin the switching process.
like many of Norfolk Southern's SD90 Max, NS7241 and 7245 were both previously owned by Union Pacific. According to NS-9.com, when these units were owned by Union Pacific, they had issues with cracks in the engine's frame around the fuel tank mounts. Union Pacific worked with EMD to fix the problem by adding more mounting brackets between the frame and fuel tank. All of the former UP SD90 Max delivered to Norfolk Southern had this modification upon delivery, and Norfolk Southern made this modification to the SD90 Max they received from CIT. When purchasing tickets to the Horseshoe Curve National Historic Landmark, you have an opportunity to buy a ticket that includes admission to the Altoona Railroaders Museum in downtown Altoona, right across from the Amtrak station. The museum is definitely worth a visit if you're ever in the area. With its low railings, the pedestrian bridge right next to the Amtrak station in downtown Altoona is a great place to watch trains, especially the Amtrak. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, Amtrak was not running the Pennsylvanian during the time of recording.
We've repositioned ourselves on the pedestrian bridge stairway to get a different angle as an intermodal train leaves Rose Yard to begin its journey into the mountain.
since the Conrail takeover in 1999, the Juniata Locomotive Shop has served as Norfolk Southern's primary locomotive shop. Sitting adjacent to Rose Yard in downtown Altoona, Norfolk Southern services well over 1,000 locomotives a year here, and with the closing of the Roanoke, Virginia locomotive shop, the Juniata locomotive shop will see an increase in workload. Originally known as Altoona Works, the shop was constructed in 1850 by the Pennsylvania Railroad shortly after the formation of the railroad. Check my channel page for drone videos of the locomotive shop, including a video showing the turntable in action. Sitting atop the 8th Street Bridge, we get a good view of our final destination, Rose Yard. This is where Norfolk Southern adds and removes pusher engines used for the climb through the mountains. Crew changes are occasionally made at a platform just below the 8th Street Bridge. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed our journey through the Allegheny Mountains. If you have a moment, please leave a comment below and check out some of the other videos on my channel. Most importantly, please consider subscribing and turn on notifications so you know when I post a new video. Until next time, happy rail fanning.